Yes, people, welcome back to the Knots Game. It's been ages since I've been studying. I hope you guys are all well. The weather outside behind me is fantastic. What a better time to show you guys some of the awesome pickups we grabbed during the end of January this year and the beginning of Feb. Yes, we've got a little bit of retro, we've got a lot of modern and a little bit of retro inspired modern gaming to go through. So most of this has been inspired by the people out there in my YouTube list that are playing 12 RPGs in 12 months this year. Commendable, commendable guys. Will you find a free time to do that? I just don't know. But at the moment we're in February. I've not really put any videos out about that, but I'm two for two as well, guys. We finished Super Mario RPG in January and we finished just tying up the loose ends of Starfield by the end of Feb. I'm not really joining in, but I'm playing in the background, guys. You've encouraged me to pick up some of those JRPGs that I've had my eyes on for ages and just haven't had the inclination to get yet. So I want to jump over, unwrap some of these because they've been sat there for a few weeks and start on my next RPG, guys. So let's turn around and take a look what games we picked up during January. Yes. But before we check out the games, we have this lovely little music box here that plays a very familiar tune. And if you just can't quite put your finger on where you've heard that melody before, stick around to the end of the video for the answer. Anyway, on to some pickups. So first up we have Dead Space Remake on the Xbox Series X. This is a remake of the 2008 classic third person survival horror that I first played on the Xbox 360. It was an amazing game so I can't wait to get my teeth sunk into this one and follow Isaac on his journey through the Ishimura with his crew to find out exactly what happened here and to take out as many necromorphs as you can with the masses of upgradable arsenal you'll pick up along the way. This game does have some truly terrifying moments but it is one of the best survival horrors I think I'd ever played outside of the original Resident Evil so definitely worth checking out. <laughs> So next up we have our first RPG, which is the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition for the Xbox Series X. I've never played any games in the Witcher series before. I do intend to at least start at the second one. I know I've got that for the Xbox 360. Really nice looking RPG series. Uh, I get serious Dragon Age vibes just from watching it, which has got me interested. Maybe I should have played it years ago and I'm late to the table with this one. But uh, there's nothing more annoying people than, look at that, nothing in the box. No manual, no extras, no, it's, it's like the complete edition, which is still completely empty in the box. Come on, man. Anyway, great looking RPG. Gonna be busy this year, guys. So before we look at any more RPGs, we've got one pickup for the Sega Saturn people. We have a game that can introduce itself, and that game is... Or as I'm going to call it, Parodius Forever With Me. Now, I've been a massive fan of Parodius since I played it on Super Nintendo as a kid. Uh, a few months back, we got Sexy Parodius for the Saturn, which was a really interesting, risque take on the game with some interesting mechanics wherein if you complete the missions during the level, it opens up different routes for the game, so it gives you infinite replayability. Parodius Forever With Me is a lot of the same. It's a slightly less risque than uh, Sexy Parodius was, but there's a massive selection of characters. There's a massive selection of stages. It's got that lovely parody-infused Gradius shoot -em up style comedic action as you play. It's a really, really fun game. It's a really, really fun series, people. And if you are a Saturn fan and you love your shooters or cute em ups like I do, then Parodius Forever With Me is just one of those games that has to be in your collection, man. What an absolutely stonking shooter, guys. I'm not sure that I enjoy it as much as Sexy Parodius, though the game is a little easier. It's still definitely worth adding to your Saturn library. 
Next up we have Front Mission First on the Nintendo Switch. Front Mission First is a remake of the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom Front Mission that came out in about 1995. I never played this but I did have it on my PS1. I think I had Front Mission 3 on the PS1. It's a really cool tactical turn based um, RPG. You get a lovely lenticular little holographic picture of a mech here which is really cool. I don't know if the camera will pick that up but there's a lot of depth to the picture. It's really nice. Also inside this fantastically lovely box, people, I can spy a manual underneath those pictures. There's a manual. There's a manual! Anyway, we'll come back to the manual. But there's some cool little bits of artwork in here from the game. Assuming, like, production artwork. It's really nice to have that in there. But come on, people, there's a manual. There's a manual in a, in a modern game. How often do we see this? Oh, blessed by the manual. Love it. So it's just going to explain all the blah, blah, blah about Front Mission. But I get real sort of Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, Vandal Heart style vibes from this game. Because it's a it's a turn-based uh, tactical RPG. I really did enjoy playing a lot of these style of games when I was younger. So I can't wait to sink my teeth into Front Mission first. And then maybe finally get around to playing Front Mission 3 on my PS1. Don't know. Or try and track down Front Mission 2 and uh, see if we can tie up a bit of a story here. But fantastic looking RPG. And the first of the Square Enix RPGs that are going to be appearing today, people. Yes. Next up we have Octopath Traveler for the Nintendo Switch. This game looks beautiful, people. I cannot believe when I first saw this that I didn't pick it up. This game is increasing in price on the Nintendo Switch. It's getting really difficult to get hold of the physical copy of the game now at a sensible price. It's a beautiful looking retro 2D inspired game. It says on the box that it is a turn-based battler again, much like Front Mission First. This one has eight heroes with eight stories and one adventure apparently, so I can't wait to finally get around to playing Octopath Traveler, people. Beautiful looking game. You went out of your way to cite one of the texts in our special archives. The knowledge housed in those tombs is the Royal Academy's greatest treasure. It is not to be divulged to the public at your whim. Laying it bare in one of your silly papers is out of the question. I am fully aware of the value of those tomes, Headmaster. It is for that very reason I would share the knowledge with my peers. You are to share nothing! That wisdom is for the Academy and the Academy alone. And straight after that, we got the sequel, Octopath Traveler 2. You know, why not? Honestly, guys, if you are a fan of the first one and you don't have the second one yet, you want it on physical. I paid 20 quid for this on Amazon about a week and a half ago, so you may still find a few copies on there. There were a few copies flying around for about 25 quid too, which is still less than half of the price of the first game if you want it new. Um, but this looks like more of the same. There's eight characters on the inlay inside this box, and they also feature heavily on the back of the box's artwork. And uh, it does say embark on an adventure all of your own this time. So I don't know. Is there still going to be eight stories linking together? I don't know. And I've played the first one to completion. Neither this one. But I can't wait to do so. Let me know in the comments if you finished these games and what uh, what you thought of them.
And the next RPG out of the bag is Triangle Strategy, again for the Nintendo Switch. Another Square Enix Unreal engine take on one of their classic RPGs. Uh, when I first booted this up and played it, it plays so much people like Final Fantasy Tactics did on the PlayStation 1. And that was possibly one of my favourite games of that era. Look at all these little people in here, man. They mean business, I'm telling you. If this is anything like Final Fantasy Tactics was to play, then Triangle Strategy is going to be probably one of my favourite games that I've picked up this month. And uh, I'm really going to enjoy this one. I think I'm going to play this one first. Definitely going to play this one first. So the final RPG we have is Tactics Ogre Reborn for the Nintendo Switch. It's another Square Enix RPG, guys. Yes, it's also another turn-based battler, just like Triangle Strategy before this and the games before that. This is a remake of the 1995 classic Super Nintendo game of the same name, and it has a lot in common with Final Fantasy Tactics, so it's often referred to as a spiritual predecessor to that game which really interests me because you know how I feel about Final Fantasy Tactics, guys. So straight after I'm done with Triangle Strategy, I think I'll sink my teeth into Tactics Ogre Reborn. It does look really interesting. And um, what can I say, guys? Another great-looking uh, tactical RPG for the Nintendo Switch. Yes, plenty of RPG fun. If only I had enough hours. Who goes there? Friends of the Resistance, and no friends of yours. The Resistance? I expected a warmer welcome than this. <laughs> They're children. Wait, do you even know who we are? You're Lancelot, and that makes you my enemy. So just because I wanted to save the biggest box till last, people, the final game we have is Cotton and Guardian Force Saturn Tribute Collector's Edition from Strictly Limited Games for the Nintendo Switch. <gasps> Whew, that wasn't a mouthful, was it? Yeah, of course it was. Anyway, these games are way out of my price bracket on the Sega Saturn. Cotton 2, Cotton Boomerang and Guardian Force are very expensive games nowadays. And uh, the cheapest way for me to enjoy these is to get this delightfully lovely box set from Strictly Limited Games. So uh, before we check the game out, let's just pop this open out the sleeve and see what we get inside this box set. Some lovely artwork on this box. The box itself is a lot like the Torican Ultra Collector's Edition. There's a magnetic strip on the side, which is nice, holding the box shut. So let's have a look what we've got in it first. And the first thing we're going to fish out is this lovely little chibi key ring of the Cotton herself, the main character in all of these games, on her little broomstick. There we go. Don't know what we're going to do with this key ring. Probably going to leave it in the box. Next out, we have the Guardian Force original soundtrack, which contains lots and lots of tracks from the game, if not all of them. Don't know. Probably going to leave that one sealed. We also have the Cotton 2 and Cotton Boomerang original soundtracks. This CD contains a list of music from both of those games. We also have some collectible cards featuring artwork from both Guardian Force and the Cotton series. I must add, the Cotton names are so original. We've got wool, we've got needle, we've got silk, and then we have Apple. Okay, yes, weird names. Next we have the really noisy but exceptionally awesome Guardian Force pin badge. Very nice. We have some stickers of the arcade cab instructions for Guardian Force Cotton 2 and Cotton Boomerang. We have what looked like more arcade cab graphics for Guardian Force featuring the controls and a little bit of advertising there. The same for Cotton Boomerang and one for Cotton 2. There's also a great big flipping poster if you've got room on your wall, which I haven't, so that's going back in the box. We've got the obligatory art book you get in all these box sets. Funnily enough, people featuring art from the games. But also lots of information and several creases where I can't use a book properly. But there's some beautiful 
hand-drawn artwork in here. Lots of information about Cotton 2, Cotton Boomerang and Guardian Force. And uh, just lots of nice artwork, people. It's an artwork book. What do you expect? There's, there's art in it. Yes. We did also get some little sticker sheets for Cotton 2 and Cotton Boomerang and Guardian Force. Don't know where I'm going to stick those, mate. And finally, we get down to the bottom to the game itself. Cotton 2, Cotton Boomerang and uh, Guardian Force, mate. There is definitely an absolute crap load of stuff in this box. So many stickers, cards, badges, CDs, etc. There's plenty. So uh, I think we should just unwrap the game now and see what we actually get in the box with the game. So yeah, there isn't much to say that hasn't already been said while we're unboxing this. This cottage contains two cotton games and Guardian Force. Uh, I'm not expecting a great deal inside because, you know, it's all been in the other box. So let's have a look at what we get inside our magical tribute collection. There's a manual! Oh my god, we got another manual! That's two manuals! I get a little bit excited, aren't I? Yeah. Um, you don't see manuals often, people. But old people like me get really excited. The tangible manual. Yes, it's lovely. Anyway, beautiful artwork in there. And obviously, the obligatory controls explained to you using screenshots from the game. So making the manual quite pointless. But it is a manual, guys. I do like it. And I'm rather impressed by just the mere appearance of a manual. So... Yeah, it's it's a good package. You get lots and lots of stuff in there. But this thing's like 60-odd quid, guys. So, yeah. you really got to want to play these games for that kind of money. But there we go. That is everything that I picked up January, February this year. Uh, plenty of RPGs. I'll see you guys next year when I've finally finished them all. That's it for another Pickups Blast, guys. I've got plenty of RPGs to be sinking some time into now. Um, so I'm going to crawl into my little RPG cave and start playing some. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think of any of these RPGs in the comments if you've finished them before. Are they worth my time? Which one should I play first? Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. And obviously, before we end, if you didn't quite get it in the beginning, here's the answer to your music box conundrum. And of course, that was the Song of Storms from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time from the Nintendo 64 and pretty much every other format it was released on. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.